Welcome, thank you for coming today. The, the panel today is how to monetize efficiently with advertising inside your apps. So I'm super excited. This is a great panel. We've got a lot of great panelists here with good backgrounds. We've got uh, studios, we have an ad network, we have mediation, we have analytics. I think we've got everything that you need to know or everyone who has an experience in using all of that to monetize your uh, advertising apps. And so um, what I want to do is turn it over to these guys to give a brief introduction of themselves and what they're all about, and then we'll jump into Q&A. So why don't we start with David? We'll start with you on the end. How about that? Hi, I'm David Zemke. I work in business development with Delta DNA, and we are a leading game analytics provider. Hey, everyone. My name is Shai. I'm the VP Games and Apps at Tubi. I am uh, addicted to games, I have to be honest. Uh, for those who don't know, Wubi is a game monetization uh, company. We help developers create uh, strategies for monetizing their non-paying users and acquiring users for their games and apps. Hi, I'm Mickey Maher. Uh, I've spent uh, nine years in the space uh, with companies that have uh, dabbled in app, uh, Facebook and mobile app monetization. I recently left Unity Technologies, where I ran the Unity Ads business, uh, to join Upsite. And if, um, uh, if people don't know uh, what Upsite is, it is a full stack of user-level analytics, segmentation, in-app marketing, and ad monetization platform. Uh, and I'm the current SVP of revenue at Upsite. Hi, I'm uh, Jonathan Simon, uh, Director of Marketing at Magmic. Uh, in addition to handling all the, the UA, I also handle all the ad monetization. Uh, Magmic's uh, located in Ottawa, Canada, been around since 2002, one of the originals in the space. And uh, we publish titles like Scategories, Phase 10, Skipbo by Mattel, Rubik's Cube. And uh, we've been heavily into ad monetization for the last couple years now, and uh, excited to talk about it. I'm Gareth Lee. I'm head of sales at Apple Deal. Uh, been in sort of the mobile ad space since 2010. So, um, part of Samato, part of some other ad tech companies. Um, Apple Deal, we're an intelligent ad mediation platform. Um, so, excited to, to talk and share ideas with these guys. Cool. Awesome. So, not just to sell David Shard, but you were formerly with Sega formerly with DNA, so a lot of developer experience as well that you can bring to the conversation. Yeah, my background's been in mobile publishing for the last 10 years. I worked at Sega and ran their business. I worked at DNA. I was at Rovio for a brief stint. I was also at Glue Mobile, so I, I get some of the pain points that developers feel when they're trying to monetize their apps. And so I'm helping to bring some of that experience to Delta DNA. Cool. So. So you can see why I'm super excited, and the hope is that if you're just planning on doing uh, video advertising or ad monetization, or maybe you're integrating, or you're just getting started, uh, hopefully we get some, some key insights for you guys so that uh, you can be more efficient about it. So with that, why don't I get started? Well, let's, let's start at the beginning. When you're thinking about putting in ad monetization, what are some of the key points and the, or the key learnings that you guys have had um, over the years in terms of what's the best way to get started. So maybe, Jonathan, since you've gone through it recently, I'll start with you and then we'll, we'll let it fly from there. Sure. Um, you know, when we first started monetizing with ads, uh, you know, you'd look at different partners, you weren't sure um, who to best go with. Um, there's so many resources out there now and uh, definitely I would suggest looking into mediation layers. Um, not only will that help uh, your fill, but uh, we'll also get you in contact with, with the right con uh, ad networks in place there um, so that you don't have to kind of do a lot of research yourself. One thing is also key, um, understanding, you know, is it iOS, Android? Some ad networks are better on certain platforms than others. Um, so I think those are some of the key things you should look at. Cool. How, how about from the publishing 
David, in terms of, you know, even before the ad networks, are things when you're thinking about putting in ad placement zones or types of ads, are there things that you should be thinking about there? Yeah, I think the number one thing would be, you know, when I was at DNA, we built an ad strategy for games, and there was an enormous amount of cultural resistance to it because they felt like, why would we want to put ads in free-to-play games when we do so well? And the important thing is to start from a design phase. So think about where your placements are going to go and where you can affect users in a positive way, and that means really working your design team to select placements that are going to benefit players, where they have a chance to either do some in-app monetization or watch an ad for a reward video and earn some coinage, but the idea that the, helps the economy and keeps them engaged. Because if you're going to lose a, lose a user, it's much easier to keep them engaged by watching a reward video. And so start that process early. Don't add it in after soft launch, or don't add it in as you're, you know, the game's been out for a month. You want to really think about it beforehand and uh, have them ready to go uh, as the game launches and as it starts to build momentum. Because if you're thinking about it past launch or past featuring, you're too late. You know, at that point, you've lost some of that momentum. So I would say go early and uh, be cognizant of where you do the placements. Cool, Mickey. Do you have anything to add or? Yeah, yeah. I think it, what David said is really important, and I go a step further. It, it, you know. I think a lot of times game developers or publishers or, or any developers are uh, against ads because they think it takes away from the game experience. Um, and in truth, it can if you do it incorrectly. But there is a way to integrate ads into a game or into an app that uh, actually adds to the experience. So, uh, you know, I would think about it as adding something into the core loop or core mechanic of the game that's ad-based that helps a user progress, helps a user that's never going to spend money, uh, earn the currency, the premium currency in the game, helps them unlock certain aspects of the game uh, that are, are, aren't available for free, uh, you know, such as if you have a daily, um, a daily wheel to spin uh, to earn a prize or a virtual good, why not show an, a, a video to be able to unlock that daily wheel, or maybe allow them to spin it once, and if they want to spin it again, have them engage with a, a video or an ad to be able to spin it again. So if you integrate it into the core loop, it becomes less of an ad experience and more uh, part of the core game experience, which actually it has proven time and time again, if you look at the data, to increase uh, user retention in games instead of what a common misconception of a game developer is, is uh, you know, take away from the retention or uh, be a negative effect on the retention. So uh, the data speaks volumes, and if you, you do it and you take the care to in integrate it like you do with any other part of your game, it's going to be more beneficial than you would have ever imagined. So when you're thinking about ad units or the types of ads you can be showing, what, what's the best way to approach it, the best strategies uh, for thinking about what's the best ad for my game? And it's shy if you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, I'm speaking to a lot of developers, and when you're speaking to someone and he's saying, I'm, I'm maxed out of ad space, you can, you can imagine what his game or what his app might look like. Um, from our experience, uh, ad monetization should have a good uh, effect on, on the user experience. If, uh, if you're integrating opt-in uh, rewarded-based ads, uh, the users are keen to engage with these types of ads, um, and they're, they're less intrusive. So it actually benefits uh, uh, onto the gameplay. So the users are looking for it. They actually uh, play for a longer time. And uh, you know, if, if a user watched a video and, and got an item in return, like a life or a great sword, he's now more familiar with this item. He understands the benefit of it and more likely to engage with it more in the future. Uh, more than that, uh, uh, more chances of him to make uh, inner purchases. And I think it was um, Unity ads that found that uh, users who watched uh, reward-based video ads, 21% um, more likely to make uh, inner purchases, and they actually spend more. Uh, I think this is very important. And it all comes down to the user experience. You know, if if you are uh, integrating uh, intrusive ads um, and you're overbombing the user with ads, so they're going to probably drop the game and stop playing. But if you integrate it smartly, opt in, and 
there's more chance of them to play for a longer time and their retention uh, will be higher while you generate revenue from the users. Cool. Now, at Ad Colony, we're very focused on video, but obviously there's display and there's other types. Is there an optimal mix? Um, should, should it be all video? Should it be all rewarded? Should, should, should display be part of the, the mix? Um, I'm curious to hear if, the, if display is still part of the conversation. Is it all video? Uh, what do you guys think? And Shai, maybe we'll, we'll go with you. Gary? Gary, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah. Um, yeah, there definitely should be a mix. Um, you know, revenue is still mostly in interstitials and banners. And uh, again, don't want to bombard your users with ads, so definitely figure out how to, uh, how these ads are going to affect the user experience. But if you have an app that has you know, long sessions, um, you can show, and, and there's a good place somewhere to show a banner. You can show a lot more banners within that than uh, you know, waiting to show a video after a completion of something. So there's definitely still a lot of revenue there to have. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a mix. And I think you know, a good way to, I guess, get a barometer on that is to, you know, if you have, or I guess, check the the top apps in the different categories and how they're utilizing the different ad units because um, you can get a sense of you know what's working and what's not. I, I frankly would never uh, put a banner in a game um, or any in engaging experience. I, I think there's really no place for banners, your typical banner ad in, in, in a mobile app. Um, uh, static, yeah, static interstitials, uh, things between uh, levels or or pages or, or whatever it is. We're, we're at a gaming conference, so let's call it levels. Definitely, um, definitely a place for that. But I think what what really is important is the segmentation of users, right? So, if, if you have paying users, you certainly don't want to bombard them with interstitial ads. Uh, it's a negative experience. But if you have uh, a user that's playing for weeks on end and really not doing anything, and there's this grinding and mining and not uh, generating you any money, I, I, I think if you segment those groups of users out, and you know, Upside has segmentation technology, DN Delta DNA does, a lot of these major analytics partners do, so if you segment out certain user groups, uh, you should show them as many interstitials as possible because you're not going to make money on that user any other way. But that's why segmentation becomes important because you don't want to do that to the wrong group of users. You want to do it to the right group of users that, hey, if they churn, they churn. At least you got some money out of them. Jonathan, you look like you agree with that. Sure. Yeah, 100% on board with, with that. We've built in a lot of the tools for segmentation ourselves. Um, worked with people like Upsight and, and others to do the same thing. I think no, there's not one fix for every game. Um, experiment, making sure that you have the tools in place in order to experiment and understand your game and your profile and your users and understand what's right for you. We do a mix of interstitial, we do with video. We've introduced rewarded video, we're just seeing um, huge leaps and gains with rewarded video, we're seeing our users email us directly saying they want more, they love it, they're writing reviews about it, and we're able to segment our user base and, you know, like, like everyone's saying, uh, you know, rewarded video is coming out and we can, you know, kind of show the people that are churning and not buying IPs. It's also a great introduction to IPs they might purchase later. Um, it hasn't cannibalized IPs. In fact, it's, it's all the data we've seen before, exactly the same thing. We're seeing more revenue being purchased because they understand uh, what an IP is. They're getting introduced to the store. They can see not only the free video uh, that they can click on, but all the other um, coin packs and other things in, in, in our games and, and they're purchasing as well. Yeah, I mean, to totally. If you set up your economy and your game correctly, uh, there's no way that rewarded video uh, will cannibalize IP. Uh, a user that is going to spend money will not grind it out and put some sweat equity into watching a bunch of videos that would equate to a dollar's worth of, of currency or, or whatever. So it's a different mentality, a different type of user. Your payers are highly unlikely to ever engage with videos. However, there is really great data and 
uh, data across the board that shows that uh, rewarded video will transfer non-payers into payers at a high rate. I, I would add to that, there's some anecdotal evidence. When we ran a, um, uh, some ads in a game with um, a very significant amount of high paying users, um, I remember getting a call from the producer up in Canada and he said, you know, what did you guys do over the weekend? And we had run some video ads and sure enough, both heavy IAP spenders and non-IAP spenders were, were getting involved with the videos and watching repeatedly, but we saw no decrease in spending. In fact, we saw spending increase, and even among the high um, spenders. And he kept saying to me, like, you're limiting it, the videos to six a day or whatever. He's like, turn it up higher. And I was like, what? <laughs> Never heard that before. So he was psyched because it drove up the ARPU, and that was an awesome experiment. So I would say, based on our research and experience, you can be a little aggressive and play around with stuff. It's most important to pay attention to the data, but you know, it's OK to show ads the first day and the second day and the third day. And, Turn them off and try them with different audience segments to see what you come back with. You know, you may surprise yourself with what happens. So, but don't be shy. You know, cool. well, there's a couple couple of good points there. I want to dive into one is the data and what type of data we should be looking at, um, and then segmentation. A lot of times we say you segment your users, but it's that's sort of a very thirty foot, thirty thousand foot type of thing. So I'd love to talk first, maybe for the data guys to start, but just what what data should we be looking at? How should we be managing the business and how does that, those data and those KPIs help us drive potentially segmentation? And then getting into segmentation is what's, what are the best practices? Is it paying players, non-paying players, or is there somewhere in between that uh, you've found that there are certain segments, cohorts that actually you know, are perfect for ads or not? So um, I'll start with David, just going back, and then we'll come down the line and, and people can chime so in. So there's a couple key, key things to measure, I mean, in terms of KPI, um, obviously, you know, revenue and eCPMs and those you pay attention to, but among segmentation um, data, it's really important to look at, you know, length of time spending the game, how many sessions they play per day, and whether or not they're spending or non-spending. And you can start with those, and then you can sort of build your segmentations around those usage patterns, which will show you um, heavy players but non-spenders are a good way to start with fairly frequent, um, you know, video updates. And you start seeing them watching videos more and engaging. And then you can further break that down and look at heavy multiplayer users, you know, and they start to see them spend time in the app and stuff. Um, so it's really important to just, I would say, look at those metrics and look at the time spent in the game and how much time they spent in each session to really help you determine whether or not you show videos. And that'll give you a good determination of where to go from there. And, you know, Mickey, you might have some more insight too, but like how many videos you show per session is a key metric, right? You don't want to bombard them. You don't want to show too many. But clearly, there's a point maybe over the minute to two minute mark, you can show a couple at a time um, if they're placed correctly. Yeah. So start with that. Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to keep some scarcity going. You don't want to just overload them with videos. But yep. you do want to try to show as many as possible, but uh, keep some semblance of, of scarcity yep. uh, that, you know, it, you only can watch a certain amount for a certain amount of time, and then you have to come back later and watch more. I mean, scarcity is always important to keep the demand going. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think just to reiterate what, what they're saying, like the how your users are using the app and retention rates and how that affects your ARP DAO and kind of playing with that and figuring out um, basically what works for your users. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I, th I think we're talking about what data is important and when to show an ad. Uh, we mentioned non-payers and payers. I think that's like bare minimum. Uh, you could go as granular as you want. Uh, let's take a Candy Crush, for instance, right? So uh, when I talk about segmentation, I talk about you can get data on how many times individual users have played level 67. And depending on the amount of times a user plays level 67 and the actual drop off uh, from that user never playing the game again, you can strategically show them a rewarded video to offer them a boost or some sort of ability to get past that level when you know there is danger of them churning. So you want to get as granny, based on resources, of your studio or your company, you want to get as granular as possible with segmentation because you're going to maximize your ARP DAO uh, very much the more granular you could get with this stuff. Payers, non-payers is, or how many sessions 
uh, you know, the session length of a player, th that's kind of bare minimum stuff. You want to actually like measure the actual, um, what they're doing and where they're struggling and where they're dropping off in the game uh, and, and figure out how to monetize those situations. I think what you're saying is totally true. I think that um, if you can find the moments where the users might drop, uh, there's, there's, there's another level of segmentation that you can reach, um, which is what is the user experiencing in, the, in this exact moment? What is he feeling? If you can tap into, into their mindset, understand their mindset within this, in this moment, you can target them better, and you can achieve uh, better results. So, if if you're if you're playing like a, a casual game, uh, let's say um, a runner game, um, you know, at, at level two, if you're if you're playing and then you you uh, you fail, um, you're probably gonna continue continue playing. But if you're at uh, level 40 and you're very into the game and you're failing at this moment, the mindset of the user is in the need of help. And if you can understand that and give the user the help that he needs, offer him uh, to watch a video and continue from the same pla uh, uh, place he just lost, you can achieve uh, the, the highest results possible when, when you're trying to monetize them. Uh, so Jonathan, is there some real world examples? Are there certain segments that you specifically follow? Is there certain key metrics that you're basing uh, your decisions for managing ad monetization around? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, everybody's got you know, really good advice up here. If I take, for example, Scategories, which is a, you know, game that we've spent a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, just the exact screens in the game that they're hitting versus different ones, we've, we've, we can server-side turn on and off placements and buttons of where you can watch a rewarded video um, for different segments of users. And we've gone super granular to try to figure out um, you know, when's the best time to pop up that video? Um, what's, the, what's the right wording that you put on that button that's going to get them to click on that video? And we've got hundreds of different data points and segments, and we're constantly just doing A-B tests, and we, we literally have a live ops team, and that's all they do is do things. We've done things like Wacky Wednesdays where it's double the coins for videos um, just to see what the impact is, and I let my ad networks know you're going to see an influx here. And, and so I, I try to balance it on both sides. There's so many things you can do if you plan ahead and, un, and, and really integrate the experience into your game instead of just shoving it in afterwards because you got to make money somehow. And I find that's really what a lot of people are doing when I talk to them about it. And I, I just think that's the wrong approach. I would add to that just that plan ahead. And as you look, for example, when you're running live events, integrate some of that into your ad strategy. Let your ad partners know and, and, and put some, some um, positions in where your fans who are not only buying into your live event or running with your tournament can also watch a few more video placements. And we always saw like a two to three cent increase in our dial just in our ad revenue when we had big live events running. So it's definitely important to, to have that stuff as part of the game flow. What I think is, is totally cool here is that you think about ad, traditional ad on television, it's just watch a video and someone gets paid for it. But what we're talking about here is actually using ad and rewarded video to incentivize your user to do some core loop within your game. And that's totally taking it to the next level. So I think that's totally exciting. And it actually, you know, it's, it's a great way to monetize as well. It's get your users to do something, um, something in your game. So with that, I think we kind of started hitting on it. But, um, Maybe it's time to jump into ad partners and looking up on the board. If I'm a new developer, there's a lot of partners, not just ad, but also mediation. And so maybe the next thing we should cover is what should I be thinking about when I start looking at partners, both ad networks and mediation? Is there a, a best practice for do I do mediation first? Do I talk to ad networks? Do I do both? What should I be thinking about as I talk with these partners? Gareth, why don't I start with you? Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. I think you know, as you are designing monetization in your app. You're thinking about what ad units are there. Um, think about what ad partners fill those ad units. Think about where your users are. If they're in certain uh, geographical regions, there are certain ad partners that are better for, for different things. And uh, really getting to know and doing research on those different ad partners. Uh, mediation is great if, if you want access uh, to 
a lot of different demand sources without putting in uh, specific, uh, the, the effort it takes to do all that. Um, so, yeah. Shai, why don't we go down the line? Yeah, um, mediations can be great if you're looking to integrate more than one or more than a few ad networks, maybe to increase your fill rates or optimize the CPMs. Um, but when, when you're choosing the, the provider that can give you uh, the best user experience, and this is, is, this is what you should take into consideration. You know, you, you build a great game, you spend a ton of money and time building that game, and you can, you can really uh, harm the user experience if you integrate a network that cannot give you what, what, what your users are looking for. And when you're choosing the, the, the network that uh, uh, you partner with, you really need to, to find the, the one that can uh, um, help you um, take the next step in order to uh, bring the users the best experience possible and monetize them together. How about mediation platform? You know, in terms of looking and choosing, how do you go about evaluating? Mickey, since it's right up your alley, I mean, what would you say is the best way to in, to think about approaching ad, or sorry, mediation platforms and selecting one? What do you look for? Yeah, so uh, I, I'll say a couple things before answering that specific question. One I want to touch on is uh, there's a lot of talk about rewarded video on this panel, and there's a lot of talk about rewarded video in this ecosystem or at this conference, uh, rewarded video is not the end all be all. It's not gonna save you. If you build a game and your currency is not selling, users don't find value in either your game or the, the way you've built your economy. So if your next step after that is throwing in rewarded video to hopefully monetize, whether a user is gonna spend a dollar or 15 seconds watching a video, if the currency is not valuable, neither is going to matter. So when you ask how do I evaluate what do I need for you know, ad partners in my game, it, it really depends. Because if your currency isn't selling, you're, the only way you're really gonna make money is hopefully you generate a lot of traffic and you can serve interstitial ads against that. Um, to your question, how do I evaluate mediation partners? Uh, I would look at technology, like are, are they, is the company funded well enough? Is their technology up to par with others in the market? Do I believe in their technology? Do I believe in the team? Has the team been around a while? Who else is using them? Uh, I would look at a business model. Uh, most mediation partners in our space have their own demand or their first party demand. They, they sell advertising. So uh, in general, they're not going to be an unbiased partner. They're uh, motivation is to make money, and they make money by serving their own ads. So sometimes their interests aren't aligned with the publisher's interest. Not saying necessarily, but you have to be careful when someone says they're unbiased, but yet has their own uh, advertising to generate money. So business model uh, is important, and uh, the actual number of ad partners or who they work with and who they support would be also the third thing that I would look at. Yeah, just to, just to add to that, um, you know, I've looked at a number of different mediation layers. I think it also depends on your team and your studio. Um, are you a one, two-person shop? Well, there's plenty of great guys out there that have a simple SDK that you throw in there that have great ad networks. They have automated waterfowls. They do a lot of the work for you, and that, that might be the perfect solution for you. If you're maybe a mid-sized studio, a bigger studio, maybe you want more hands-on support or you need to tie in like ourselves to our back end and we plug into different things, well maybe we need, we need another mediation layer that, that gives us more of that and um, more, more help um, and more openness to try any network we completely want. Other ones you're kind of constricted, there's nothing wrong with that, it's just you got to consider your place in the space and what is best for you. I can tell you right now, all the best ones are in the next room over there, so you can't go wrong. Um, you just got to understand who you are first, and uh, to Mickey's point, um, understand their business model, make it sure it aligns with your business model, and uh, it, it, I definitely do recommend going with a mediation layer. I think it, it helps fill, but they can also 
direct you to the great ad networks. And I wouldn't, you know, to, to, to Ian's question, where do you start first? I would, I would go both ways. I'd start talking to ad networks. I'd start talking to mediation layers. I'd start bouncing off ideas. And then the same names are going to keep coming up over and over again. And you'll know where you need to go soon enough. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, just one other point, just kind of in line with everything, though, is transparency, making sure that you know exactly what the mediation layers are doing. Because um, to, to Mickey's point, uh, a lot of the business models is to prioritize their ads, uh, but not all mediation layers are doing that. So, um, yeah, just fully understand who you're going to be working with. Yeah, I forgot transparency, but certainly in the top, <laughs> top three. Transparency is important. You want to know what data you're seeing from them and to, for them to be totally honest about where your ad traffic's coming from, and that's crucial. And I also would second the, the point about technology because I think it's crucial that you get some level of control in the SDK over what you can do with ads. And I know some partners, for example, who when we run very, we were running very high power uh, multiplayer games, we didn't want to show ads or even cache them and some partners had the ability to shut that off, which meant a lot to us because we then didn't have to, to, to cache ads in the background while we're doing multiplayer game sessions and that was important. So that was one reason we chose one partner over another, you know. So technology and transparency are two key things. So, so in terms of ad networks, are some key, what are some key characteristics when you're looking at the different ad networks that you think are important to be evaluating and checking the boxes? Obviously one um, we mentioned was just relationship and fit. Is there other things that we should be thinking about when we're looking at the different networks? Because there are quite a few out there and then there's obviously um, resellers and there's other type of, of ad networks that are, are buying inventory as well. So. In terms of what, uh, what you guys think is best practices, are there things that you really look for first? Is it scale? Is it ECPM? What could it be? So, Jonathan, you were reaching uh, up, so you go first. Again, I would take it back to your game um, and understand your game. For us, um, we work with brand clients like Mattel and Hasbro. So we found that other branded content uh, ads, branded ads, work well with our games. Um, so we tend to try to work with ad partners that have branded content because um, we have that demographic that, that works with. Um, and you'll, you'll understand right away when you start to talk to a lot of these ad networks, you know, the, the people you go with your gut feeling too, like are you getting a good feeling of the relationship? Are they, um, you, you'll know as you go through the process, it's, it's all about relationships and it doesn't start, stop when you, you stick their SDK in the game, are they, did they give you an account manager? Are you, are you talking to them? Are they, maybe they want to cut some of your fill and that's okay because uh, you'll get a higher ECPM and you can manipulate your waterfall in, in, in a certain way. So, um, you know, we've grown to understand the great relationships that we've had and I think it's important to talk to other studios and, and, and understand what relationships they have and uh, it will definitely help you out. Do you want to? Yeah, I, I totally agree. Relationship is key. Um, when when you're speaking to to an ad network and, uh, and this is your business, uh, you, you want to have a good relationship with them. You want them to uh, really help you uh, with with the with the monetization and the strategy, and give you some pointers and tips, and not just tell you here's the SDK, go ahead. Um, you also mentioned the branded content. This is also very important. Um, you know, um, if you're integrating an ad network and um, they're going to advertise uh, video ads, for example, um, if they if they advertise your competitors within the game, you know, some some developers don't really like it. Uh, we it will be, for example, um, re emphasis on, on branded content, and this is uh, what a lot of developers are looking at. Uh, we're seeing a lot of brands coming in and uh, understanding that this is a great uh, uh, market for them. And um, a as a developer, you're really looking to uh, um, keep the users in your game, you know, and, and the brand is exactly what you're looking for. Um, yeah, understand again, these are this is your business, so. Um, Really, again, to read at their point, have a relationship with these guys. Understand uh, what the trends are, are happening, what, what's coming up in the near future. I mean, the market for ads right, is, is not always consistent. Um, so having that relationship helps you get insight into uh, what's going on. And then really understanding what that network is really good at. Not all ad networks are great uh, at everything. So um, 
yeah, just having a good understanding of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, I think everyone to a man up here has said, uh, you know, use who, uh, you know, support's really important, relationship's really important. Uh, coming from someone who ran Unity Ads for four years, I can tell you there's very, very little difference between any of these ad networks. It's, it, sometimes one of them performs better in your game, uh, another one might perform better in another game. Very little difference. So. If I were a game developer choosing an ad network, I would first go uh, with relationship. Are these guys paying attention to me? How much do they want my business? How much are they valuing me? Because that's going to go a long way to uh, you know, showing you, you know, how the relationship's going to go uh, after integration, how much they're going to push their premium demand to your game to help you monetize. So relationships, extremely important, because there's very little difference on the, on the performance side uh, the eCPM side or, or how much money they're going to generate for you. Uh, and secondly is ease of integration. How easy is it to integrate? How large is the SDK? How much trouble is it for me to integrate one of these ad networks? And third is test a couple. I mean, you don't want to test three or four or five because you're not going to really get a good gauge on who's performing or not, but pick the couple that are resonating the best with you uh, and, and test them against each other. And that's a, a good place for mediation to come in because mediation uh, allows you to seamlessly test a couple against each other uh, in real time and give you a true, a somewhat true benchmark of how one's performing against the other. So, uh, you know, it's, it's relationship, ease of integration, and then it doesn't hurt to test a couple. David, I see you nodding your head. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Or? No, I'm just nodding because when you talk about ease of integration, there's, there's a funny thing that comes up, which is if any of them tell you that it's easy to put in their SDK, just kick them out because that's the biggest lie in the business. It's never that easy, all right? And Five it minutes? It doesn't, it, they all say that, it's, it's total bullshit. You just have to spend some time and do the integration right, no matter what. Um, the second little dirty secret about the business is everybody's selling everybody else's traffic. So like, like Mickey had pointed out, you know, test a few, try a few different ones. The relationship is the number one point. And you're putting their ads in your game, so you really need to work with them closely to understand the business, to have them align with your business goals and to hopefully build a long-term relationship to where you're both making a lot of money out of this. And so that's a key piece. Um, I would look at that first and foremost and, and go from there. And a good ad partner should be helping you yes. figure out what the best practices on integration in your particular game. If the person you're working with doesn't know how to do that, then it's not the right person to be working with. Cool. We're, we're almost out of time. I want to give everyone else on the panel just a quick second. So, if, if Shai, if there's anything you want to mention. No, I, I totally agree uh, on what you said. Uh, if, you're, if you partner with an ad network, and I mentioned it before, uh, you, really, you really need to have uh, the ability to talk to them and, and ask them, okay, am I doing something okay? Is this the right move? And they have a lot of experience with a lot of developers and a lot of game and types of games, and, and this, is, this is where they can really help you and give you a few pointers on, on what to do next. Cool. Jonathan, any, any last words? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> relationships are key. Going to c conferences like this, meeting people face to face, you know, having a drink with them, looking them in the eye. Um, I could tell you a hundred times I've got phone calls from people saying twenty, thirty dollar eCPMs first things out of their mouths. That's when you hang up the phone. Uh, you need to to understand how the market is and understand you know when someone's being real with you and when they're when they're not. So, like I said, they're all out, out here. You know, I, I worked with all of them. Work work with some. Uh, many of the people that are out there, and uh, we got we got the best in the room over there, and they and they can definitely uh, help you out with your game. So you guys talk a lot about rewarded video. I'm just wondering what's the next ad format in you guys' opinion? I think video has proven in gaming to be uh, by far the best um, format. Uh, users uh, at Unity, we did a survey, um, uh, you know, a couple thousand users, all of them. 75% uh, of them loved engaging with video on mobile and in-game. Uh, so video has proven, at least for now, to be the best, uh, the best format. I know there's uh, a lot of playable buzz, a lot of playable ads. I, 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 don't, I think it's interesting. I just don't think it's proven 
So unless it's proven, uh, video for now. You're talking about playable ads? Playable like? ads, yeah. Okay. I interactive ads, which you can yeah. play within the ad unit. I think it's a mix. I think it's video is definitely the strongest in terms of revenue and potential. I also think that interstitials still have a place in there. Um, I would agree with some earlier statements that I don't think banners have a great place in gaming just because they really disrupt the UI. But you could do a combo of interstitial and video placements, and you'd see some pretty good results. And you'll know really quickly how to test a few and turn them on and off. So, Yeah, I mean, interstitials, there is a place for them. Uh, video is just going to pay more. Yep. Uh, but you have to decide if you have an interstitial placement, do you want to interrupt the game experience with a 15 to 20 second video, or do you just want a static interstitial to flash by? So that, that's kind of up to you on how you want to build out your experience, but the video uh, will pay you more even in a non-rewarded interstitial slot. Hi, great uh, lecture. Just a quick question. Is it just universal accept accepted now that uh, the percentage of insider purchases is going to stay stagnant? Meaning, is there any, uh, it's probably a million dollar question, of course, but is it any new things that you see on the horizon that could pull up insider purchases, or is it just two to five percent will pay, 95, 96 will never pay? Do you know what I mean? Is there any innovative that you heard about or thinking about or anybody has heard about something new ways? Because uh, it's just an interesting thought. Tough question, I know. I, I'm, I, I'm not the game developer, it's probably sure. him, but I'll, I'll say that two things, that I think some of the top grossing developers, you'd see a lot more than 5% paying. And overall in markets like Japan, I mean, casual games, uh, Probably, I don't know. I mean, on average in a country like Japan, it's a lot more than 5%. So I think it's a lot of uh, free to play has not been around that long in the West, in the United States. So I think it's a lot of still market education. And as long as, you know, mobile games continue to be free to play, I think you'll see the good mobile games, that number, the average number will increase over time. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think uh, it's a cop out just to say, well, three to five percent of your users are going to buy, and let's just monetize the rest. No, like our, you know, we have a whole team that focuses on that three to five percent, trying to get it up to ten percent, fifteen percent, and my team is working on whatever's left over to try and monetize through ads. And if we can use rewarded video or any other types of tools in conjunction with the the product manager team to get the IEPs up as well we're all for it because it just brings our total revenue up. So I think it's, it's totally a cop out just to say, you know, we've seen all these videos, three to five percent, worry about the rest. I just, I agree with Mickey. I mean, uh, we're seeing in Asia that that's not the case and uh, it just needs to be educated here. It's, uh, and people need to, to understand that uh, it's not gonna kill you to spend a, a dollar in your game or things like that. No, I would agree too that, that um we're at an interesting time because, look, if you look around and look at kids these days, they've all grown up with free-to-play games, so we're only really touching the tip of the iceberg, and 10 years from now, that's all they're going to play. And they're used to both having ads in games and spending to, to progress, so 10 years from now, we're going to be looking at much higher percentages. Uh, we're going to also be looking at better games, and I think the last piece is everybody's waking up to the idea that you've got to pay attention to users in terms of data and what they're, what they're, how they're performing in the, in the apps you have. So as we get smarter about that and we really understand the metrics to apply, uh, we're only going to get better at it, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, I think everyone in this room at some point in their life has at least bought one cartridge or console game that spent 50 bucks on a video game. But I probably bear to, you know beg to say that not many in this room has spent fifty dollars total in their life across all their mobile games. So it's certainly a, a market education thing. It's a change of behavior, which David pointed to. Uh, the younger generation is so used to this behavior that when they reach a point of uh, disposable income, uh, I think you'll see that at least here in the West, uh, that average number increase significantly. So you guys mentioned that there are a lot of monetization partners out there and then, you know, the difference is the integration time, the support and the relationship and that, you know, no matter what partner that you choose that the ECPMs that you might get is relatively same across the board. It might depend on the types of game that you might have. But the real question for game developers when they think about integrating ad if they didn't have that strategy before or they've been doing it is how do I increase the ECPM, right? 
the mediation aspect, you know, creates a waterfall that you can work with multiple networks to try different kind of ECPM, you know, ad monetization solutions. But how much does, you know, ad placement, you know, you guys said rewarded video works best right now. How much does user segmentation and ad placement, all the work that you can really put into it, you know, affect the ECPM that a developer gets from the beginning when they, you know, work with certain partners and then, you know, six months later when they're trying to boost that ad monetization strategy? Very, very, very significantly. Um, at Unity Ads, we did some case studies where uh, great integrations were seeing a 20 cent ARP DAO. And a lot of you game developers out there don't even see that on IAP. So um, we've seen, uh, we did a case study with a, a pretty major game developer at Unity Ads where the change of integration, moving it from a standard integration uh, to a more uh, core game loop integration, uh, increased ARP DAO on rewarded video by 250%. So uh, integrating it in the right spot, making it a part of the core game loop, making it, don't bury it in your store, showcase it to your user as part of the game, can significantly, it's not just a marginal increase, it's a significant increase. I would add, so I had a great case experience where I had developer, or team A, with one of my previous roles, they put in ad integration, and it just did a very basic job at it, right? They buried it in a couple menus, and they didn't really turn much stuff on, and that was it, and it was with a huge IP game, right? So we were like, we thought, oh, it'll do well because it's got a big audience. Well, they ended up getting really crappy easy PMs and not getting much response. Team B, on the other hand, spent a lot of time working with us in integration, put it right up front, put it in the game economy, set, had a separate set of um, KPIs within the game economy so you could watch ads, and they saw immediately um, at least a 50 to 60% increase in ECPMs and traffic, and they drove up the ARP DAO over three to four cents per user. So it was, it was huge, and it just made such a difference. And it got to be when I was working with Team A and Team B, I'd point to Team B and be like, look at what they did. I mean, they did some really amazing work, and they spent the time to do it. And it made a difference both in revenue and, and engagement. So it's worth it. Well, I'd like to thank everyone on the panel. This has been uh, very informative and great. And so thank you all for attending. <laughs>